There's a show on Netflix that's about undercover Palestinian soldiers pretending to be Jewish Israelis in order to catch a Jewish terrorist. I'm kidding. Netflix would never buy that. Let's rewind. There's a show on Netflix that's about Israelis pretending to be Muslim Palestinians in order to catch a so-called Palestinian terrorist. I mean, are Palestinians now supposed to provide the occupier not only with stolen land, but also means to relieve their guilty conscience and make profitable art that's praised and sold globally? The short answer is no. The long answer... TV series about a unit of undercover Jewish soldiers called Mistarvim. They infiltrate Palestinian society to catch an important Hamas figure labeled a terrorist. There really is such a unit in Israel and they really do operate in occupied Palestine. The word Fauda, which means chaos in Arabic, was also taken from former Israeli soldiers who used the word to indicate that their cover has been blown. That duality of meaning, which begins in the name of the show, continues throughout. On the one hand, it has received significant amount of praise for portraying Palestinian and Israeli societies in a balanced and objective way. On the other hand, its creators and producers are directly implicated with the Israeli government and the army. Its co-creator and lead actor, Leo Raz, is a former soldier and son of a Shin Bet member. What you're about to watch is Raz and his fellow co-creator Avi Isharov promoting the show at APAC. Okay, so I used to be in uh, Duvdevan. It's an undercover unit in Israel. Thank you. And I was a Hamas terrorist. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I, I was, I am a journalist. Don't know what APAC is? Here's a short clip from their YouTube channel. This is Israel. The Jewish state is in a dangerous neighborhood and under constant threat from rockets terrorists and, and propaganda there is consensus that israel's security is an american priority so how can a show appeal both to apac and someone on the completely other end of the political spectrum i found no english language account of a palestinian talking about fauda actually they love it you know usually they do not say it in public they're not interviewed about that but yeah. when they talk to them in four eyes so yes they like it and you know what even Hamas officials like it. I was just last week in, yeah. So if you are a Palestinian and you've seen the show, let us know what you think. For the sake of argument, let's assume that the show does indeed receive positive feedback from both sides, like its producers and some media organizations claim it does. The next question would be, but why? How can a TV show about the occupation please both sides? Well, maybe it's because there's a great divide amongst its fans. Emily Nussbaum, who won the Pulitzer Prize for Criticism, wrote a piece called The Great Divide. It's when two groups of people love a TV show for completely opposite reasons. She gave the example of an old American sitcom called All in the Family. The main character of the show was a bigoted conservative old man. It was produced by a liberal who wanted to show how absurd the conservative view of the world was. Results? Conservatives ended up loving the protagonist Archie Bunker, so the show's criticism was taken completely as endorsement. But what does that have to do with Fauda? If indeed both Israelis and Palestinians like this show, it could be because they only relate to one half of it, the good half, in their view. In other words, there is an Israeli man playing with his kids in one scene and torturing an old guy in another. And you might focus on the cute scene or the brutal one based on your preconceived notions. And that's called confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is a well-researched psychological phenomenon which suggests that we selectively process information in a way to confirm our preconceived notions. But isn't any work at danger of being misinterpreted? At times, artists are vague enough that the viewer can create their own meaning. And most of the time, that's okay. But the stakes are high when your work is about an ongoing conflict, war, or occupation. In Fauda, although the show claims and to a certain extent delivers on its promise to tell a two-sided story, one mustn't forget that its producers have direct ties to the Israeli government and the army. It calls all Hamas members terrorists, and its promotional tours include the biggest Israeli lobby event in the United States. At the end of the first season, the big reveal is that, spoiler alert, the wanted Palestinian man somehow managed to smuggle chemical weapons into the country. How? 
Don't worry about it, we're never told how. The important thing is, he did this to provoke Israel so that they would retaliate so violently that the international community would come to Palestine's rescue. If this argument sounds familiar, it's because you might have heard similar arguments from the Israeli government before about human shields. In other words, Palestinians provoking the violence done to themselves. You know, here's the difference between us. We're using missile defense to protect our civilians and they're using their civilians to protect their missiles. But even if we put all of that aside and imagine for a second that the creators did intend to portray reality with as little commentary as possible, there is still a troubling aspect to the whole thing. And it relates to a modern Hebrew saying. Yorim Bushim, which means shooting and crying. Artworks made by Israelis about questioning the ethics of occupation and their role in it, while at the same time continue to profit, partake, or be complicit in it. This genre of artworks is called Yorim Veboshim. Similar questions regarding ownership of art and narrative have been raised in other contexts, like when white American artist Dana Schutz did a painting of Emmett Till, who was brutally murdered as a black boy in 1955 for being falsely accused of having flirted with a white woman. The painting brought up a lot of conversation, some of which was highly antagonistic in nature. People said that a white woman was profiting off the suffering of black bodies that were put through that suffering by white people in the first place. Many asked for the painting to be removed from the museum and some even argued that it should be destroyed altogether. Similarly, can we not argue that with its creators and plot directly exploiting the Palestinian people and their suffering, even if well-intentioned, the Israeli makers of the show receive benefits in the form of money, acclaim, prestige for their work that they're doing on the back of the occupation and the occupied people. It's especially important to be critical of Fauda when it can be the only source of information some people far, far away from the region have about Israel and Palestine. Art can certainly be used for educational purposes, but the problem is there is no Palestinian equivalent to tell its side of the story, and even that is done by the occupier. The makers of the show are aware of its potential soft power, and they're only one part of the increasingly growing reach of the Israeli TV worldwide. What do you think? Is Fauda just a well-made thriller on Netflix, or is there reason to be concerned about who makes it and profits from it?